I know why I'm supposed to be here. Uh, the school knows why I'm here, and teachers and stuff know why I'm here. But I started to think, I wonder if you guys even know why you're here. So what I thought I would do is I'm going to ask you three different questions, okay? And I would love it if you would please honestly and uh, clap for the reason why you're here, okay? For example, reason number one, how many of you are here because you want to get some good information about electronic cigarettes to make a good decision in your life? Go ahead and clap if that's why you're here. Okay, good. Nice. About 20 of you, that's good. How many of you are here because you want to get some good information about electronic cigarettes? Maybe to help somebody else out. Go ahead and clap if that's why you're here. Okay. Cool. Same 20 students, that's great. Last but not least, how many of you are here? Because <laughs> basically you're just glad to be out of class for about 45 minutes or so. And that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, it's always so funny to see the teachers clapping right there. Yeah, that's why I'm here, get me out of class. Well, my name is Ray Lozano. I do get to travel all across the nation talking to kids about drugs and alcohol just like this. I'm really curious about this. I am Mexican Hispanic. Any of the Mexican Hispanic kids out there? Two, good, four, nice. Five, six, okay, good. Well, being Mexican Hispanic, when I was born, my father gave me a middle name that's about that, sorry, probably about that long. I never have them introduce me by it because they always get it wrong. Uh, my full name is Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintano Lozano. Yeah, right? Ray Enrique Eduardo. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. All right? I was, in, uh, I was in Arkansas about two weeks ago. And they tried to say my name, but I found out a whole bunch of kids out there can't make this sound. <laughs> Watch, try it real quick. <laughs> who, uh, who cannot, who cannot make that sound? Oh my gosh, right? Wow, whole group of them. Hands down. Everybody that had their hand up was going like this, huh? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Just look for them. They got spit all over their shirt now, so we know who they are, right? Let me give you guys a chance to try it out. Everybody look up this way. Everybody say, Ray. Ray. Get ready. Here it comes. Enrique. Enrique. Eduardo. Eduardo. Quintana. Quintana. Quintano. Lozano. Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintana Lozano. Students, there were times, there were times having that name was fantastic, times when it was terrible. I'll tell you when it was terrible having that name. You guys remember kindergarten learning to spell your name for the very first time? Right in your letters? You guys, I knew I was going to be there all day because it was like Ray Enrique, you know. Halfway through, I'd be like, I need more paper, T-shirt. You know, I turned it in, it looked like a homework assignment. You know? you know when it worked out really good? Anybody in this room ever had an adult get mad at you and call you by your full name and you knew you were in trouble, right? Yes. Yes. Hands down. Everybody that had your hand up, think how far you could run with a name that long before they could catch you, right? <laughs> If I got in trouble with my mom right here, man, I could be out the exit, over the parking lot, over the bridge, <laughs> before she'd hit me with that chunk class. So that worked out okay, man. I was happy about that, you know. But uh, I, I know this is going to sound really goofy. I love talking about drugs. I do. And I'll tell you what. There's a little thing that I listen for all the time, and I heard it today. When they do uh, my uh, introduction, and they go, Ray Lozano, national speaker, is going to be talking about drugs and alcohol. There's always one kid or a couple kids in the audience that go, ugh, right? Because how many of you sat through like those really boring drug presentations, right? Yeah, hands down. So when the Elks, when the Elks asked me to put this together, they said, what's the best way to get information across? Should we show these scary pictures? I'm like, nope. Should we tell the kids real scary stories? I'm like, nope. They said, what's the best way to get it across? I said, if a kid can walk out of the gym and think that they were like in a comedy show, 
these kids will remember this information for a long time. And so, students, understand, today, no scary pictures, no scary stories. I don't even have a drug background. But, and I sh but I'm going to give you some good information, because watch this. This is amazing to me. Raise your hand if you know electronic cigarettes are bad for you. There it is, right? Every hand, every hand in the room went up. You guys know that they are bad for you, but the thing is, a lot of times you don't know why. So we're going to be talking about the big why part. Why are they bad? Here's why I do what I do. Here's the reason why I'm standing in front of you right now. I have gotten to the point where I am so sad, I guess would be the right word, to see people that looked like they were going to be amazing and do amazing stuff in life, but then they lose it because of drugs and alcohol. I got a family member like that, my sister. My sister has done nothing in her life except for drugs, and it's so sad to me. She doesn't have any friends. Nobody will remember her when she passes away, you know, and it's just a tough thing. Now, I'm going to tell you an old man thing, okay? This is one of those old guy things. When I was sitting in front of an audience, or when I was in the audience one time, and an older guy said this to just the same situation, I remember thinking, nah, that's not true. But as I got older, I started to realize how true it was. Here's this old man thing, okay? Every student sitting on the floor right now, up in the bleachers, when you were born, you were given some kind of amazing talent, skill, or ability that more than likely your neighbor doesn't have. And I'll be honest with you, if you take care of this talent, skill, or ability that has been built into you already, it will take care of you. Let me show you this, okay? This is your talent, your skill, your ability, but this is also the thing that drugs and alcohol steal away from people. Now, some of you are going to be able to clap. Some of you won't. Everybody will have a chance. These first three, I cannot clap at at all. I am terrible at the first three. By round of applause, how many people in this room are really great at playing some kind of sport? Go ahead and clap if you're great at playing sport. Right? Nice. Not me. I was the kid hoping to be picked last. I am terrible at sports. Now think about this. Whatever sport you love, there's somebody out there playing at a professional level, but there's also somebody who lost it because of drugs and alcohol. By round of applause, how many people in this room are great at playing some kind of musical instrument? Go ahead and clap if you're great at that. Nice. Somebody's out there playing that musical instrument at a professional level, somebody lost it because of drugs and alcohol. By round of applause, be honest on this one, how many people Math is your jam. You love math. Go ahead and clap if you love math. Do you? Really? That's cool, man. Yeah. Not me. Not me. Math people. I'll tell you what. Math will open so many doors for you. If you, um, hey guys, listen up. Up here. If you're going to launch a rocket, we need math. If you're going to build a room like this, we need math. If you're going to put a logo on a shirt, we need math. Don't allow drugs and alcohol to take that away from you. All right, I have about six of you picked out right now. I, I think I'm going to hit this just right. This is the one that I would go crazy clapping at, okay? How many people in this room are always getting in trouble for talking way too much? Yeah, whole back row back there, man. <laughs> Teachers are crying right now, right? You guys, that was me. I was the kid in school that could not, could not stop talking. If I would have walked in here with you guys, there would have been a teacher that would have caught me at the door. No doubt in my mind, because it happened so many times. A teacher would have said, hey, Ray, uh, can you sit by yourself? No, you know what? Don't sit by yourself. Uh, you know what? Just stay away from me. No, no. You know what, Ray? Just sit right next to me. My seat was always right next to the teacher anytime we had an assembly and stuff like that. I was a kid that couldn't stop talking. Uh, I had a teacher, though. We got teachers in the room, so I want to tell this story. 
I had a teacher that saved my life, Mrs. Lyons, sophomore year high school. I always sat in the front row because every teacher knew I was a big time talker. This one time social studies class, I'm turned around this way and I'm making all of the kids behind me laugh super hard in class. All my little talkers in the room, is that a good time to be talking or a bad time? Bad, yeah, great, yeah, right? <laughs> bad, you know it's bad. All the kids are laughing super hard and then they did this like hard stop. They're like, ha ah. ha I'm like, man, what happened? That was weird. I was talking so much, I did not see the teacher get up out of her desk, walk over, and she had her hands on my desk, and her face was like right about here. I turn and I look, I'm like, whoa, Mrs. Lyons? She looked at me and she said these words that I had he heard from like second grade on. Ray, you know you're gonna get in more trouble with all that talking, right? I looked at her and I said, yes, Mrs. Lyons, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> Give me some more detention, let's keep going, right? Already had five hours detention in this class for talking. She looked at me and she goes, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. She said, detention doesn't work for you. I said, it doesn't. She goes, no, nope, we're gonna do something different. When class is over, just stay seated. Now when a teacher tells you that, you know you're in big time trouble, right? So class is over, I'm hoping one of my friends will rescue me, they're just making fun of me, you know, as they're walking out the door. Mrs. Lyons picks up her keys and we start walking out of the classroom. And I realized, ah, oh, we're walking towards the principal's office, right? I've done this walk before, not a big deal. We went past the principal's office. Now my mouth got all dry, my heart's beating really fast. And we go to the theater room. We had a big auditorium at our school. We go to the theater, she walks me to the middle of the stage. She stands me in the middle of the stage, overlooking all the chairs. She says, wait right there. She went in the back, got the theater teacher, and she walked up and said, this kid is in your class now. And he goes, he is? He goes, yeah, this kid's got too many words inside of him. Students, I never would have went to the theater department on my own. She started me down this road. She saved my life. I don't know if I should have done this or not, but years down the road, I found her on Facebook, <laughs> right? Found her phone number. I called her like a stalker, you know? <laughs> and I was all excited. I'm like, Mrs. Lyons, Mrs. Lyons, do you remember me? Oh, gosh. I remember her words. She said, no, I don't, right? I said, Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember who you are now, right? I said, Mrs. Lyons, thank you so much. She goes, why? And I said, you saved me. I said, I make a living out of talking. And she's like, yes, I knew it, right? And she was so happy for me. So all my little talkers in the room, the kids who are sitting here right now whose mouths are filling up with words, you got a joke ready to go. Let me tell you what. you got to learn when to talk and when not to talk. I got to the place in my life, I said, you know what, I'm not going to talk for free anymore. So all my talkers that are in the room, stop giving it away for free. Figure it out. People pay me to talk now. I will not allow drugs and alcohol to take that away from me. By a round of applause, we're the people in the room that are great at playing video games. Go ahead and clap if you're great at playing video games. Nice. Nice. I used to work for a hospital and video game players, the world literally is going to belong to you in a couple of years, if not already. I was at this hospital. We were in their auditorium. 900 doctors, nurses, administrators. I was working in the ER at the time. We went to see a landmark operation. One side of the screen said London. The other side of the screen showed a patient laying in a bed in Southern California. When it came time for the operation, this doctor walked on the screen from London, introduced himself, pulled down these virtual reality goggles, and he performed an operation in Southern California from London. 45 minute brain operation. When it was over, they said, this is it. This is the direction that we're going in. Doctors literally do not need to leave their house anymore to perform an operation. This is so cool. Talked to a buddy of mine at the hospital. He says, in about nine months, they're going to release this really cool thing. They have developed sunglasses. They look exactly like sunglasses. The doctor walks into the operating room, puts these sunglasses on, and they look so cool, he said. But with these special sunglasses on, when he looks down at a patient, 
He can switch the sunglasses to see bone, to see muscle, or to see the circulatory system without needing an x-ray, real time. It is crazy. And he said that'll flip over to video game stuff super fast. Instead of the big VR thing, you're going to have sunglasses. Where are the people in the room? If I gave you $20, you could hold on to it. He had like $80. Go ahead and clap if you're great at saving money. Nice. Nice. If you're good with money, drugs and alcohol will take that away from you really fast. Where are the people that are great at spending money? Nice. I don't know what you can do with that. <laughs> I have no idea. Sleep in your car? I don't know, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, drugs and alcohol want to take that stuff away from you. I'm going to tell you a name right now, and what makes me sad about saying this kid's name is you're never probably going to hear this name again in your entire life. This should have been a kid that stood right here next to me. I would have carried this kid with me speaking all the time. Miguel Sanchez. I'm going to say it again. Miguel Sanchez. Miguel Sanchez started high school with my son and daughter. Miguel Sanchez lived three houses down from us. Literally every day of the week, Miguel would come over to our house. He'd eat breakfast with my two kids and my wife. I'd make them all breakfast. And then I would drive them to school. Let me tell you who Miguel Sanchez was. He had what I call the trifecta of high school students. The three best things about being a high school student. Number one, Miguel Sanchez was a straight A kid. Straight A's. I looked at his report card, progress report, straight A's. I never saw this kid carry a book with him. I don't know if he had a backpack, and he definitely never studied with my kids. Straight A's. I know that kid's in this audience right now. Straight A's. Second thing about Miguel Sanchez, he loved to run. This kid was a runner. His body was designed for running. <laughs> my body's designed for digesting pizza. Okay? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Yeah. Right? Nothing wrong with that. That's my skill. Miguel Sanchez was a runner. Let me ask you, where are my runners right now? I mean, you got to literally love to run. Uh, right? Yes, thank you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Students, you know how much I hate running? If these curtains caught on fire right now, I'm walking out of here, you know. Now, they may say there's free tacos out there. I'll jog a little bit, but I'm not going to run, okay? Huh. Miguel Sanchez was a runner. Baseball, number one. Football, number one. Track. I would go to his track meets just to watch this kid run. He was amazing. He was going to be like the Michael Jordan of running. Third thing about Miguel Sanchez, fantastic personality. Just a cool kid. If I brought him in this room his sophomore year of high school, I would safely say 90% of you would want to be his friend. And you know what? He'd want to be your friend. He was just a cool, cool kid. That was Miguel Sanchez. I told Miguel Sanchez one day when he was eating breakfast at our house, I said, Miguel, I said, man, your life's going to be amazing. He says, you think so? And I go, oh, oh yeah, man. With your skills, your ability to play sports, and your personality, and, and uh, your grades, it, it's going to be crazy for you. It's going to be amazing. Freshman, sophomore, junior year, Miguel came over to the house for breakfast. Senior year, Miguel stopped coming over to the house. About a month into it, I asked my daughter, I said, honey, where's Miguel? She goes, ah, oh, dad, I was hoping you wouldn't ask. I'm like, where is he? She goes, this is going to make you really sad. And I said, no, no, don't say it. She goes, yep. Miguel started smoking weed. I said, no. I said, uh, did you talk to him? She goes, yep. What did he say? Miguel Sanchez, who told my daughter, who was like a sister to him. He was only going to smoke twice a month. That's it. Twice a month. After football games or track meets, because his legs hurt so much, he found out if he smoked weed, his legs didn't hurt the next day. I told her, tell Miguel I want to talk to him. She goes, Dad, Miguel doesn't want to talk to you. I'm like, I'm not going to judge this kid. It's his life, man. I just want to talk with him. And she goes, nope, I'm not going to talk to you. Sure enough, man, Miguel Sanchez went down that road. I saw so many kids go down when I worked in counseling. Twice a month, turned into 15 times a month, turned into 30 times a month, 
turned into Miguel smoking weed every morning, every afternoon, every day after school, and then probably right before he went to bed. Let me ask you this. Somebody raise your hand here in a second. When it came time for the amazing Miguel Sanchez to graduate high school, what do you think happened? He died. He died. No, I would not tell that story. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, and Miguel died. <laughs> right, let's go. Right. No. Miguel is still alive today. Let me take some. Person with the blue and black check. Yeah, what, what happened to Miguel? Yeah. He what? Got sick or ill. No, that did not happen. Orange shirt, I think it says Reese's on it. Talk loud. He failed. No, did not fail. Person in the back, gray sweatshirt up against the wall. Talk loud. He got cancer? Nope. Let me take one more. Yes. He dropped out. He dropped out. Nope. Students, you know what happened to Miguel Sanchez on graduation night? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happened to Miguel. 800 kids, I'm sorry, 500 kids, 550 kids sitting in this baseball field. 3,000 parents in the stands. They said my kid's name. David Lozano, 12 people clapped. They said my daughter's name, Brooke Lozano, 12 people clapped. They said some other kid's name, Jason Day, 12 people clapped. And then they said, Miguel Sanchez. Miguel stood up out of his chair. Students, I do not know how this happened. 3,000 parents in the audience started to do a slow clap like you see in a movie. And I look around, I'm like, how does everybody know Miguel? Don't do the clap right now yet. Thanks, man. Miguel stood up, walked towards the stage while everybody was doing the slow clap. He shook the principal's hand, shook the vice principal's hand. He gave his school counselor this big, huge hug. They talked for a minute. She handed him this little leather book that had his diploma in it. And instead of walking off the stage like every other kid did, Miguel Sanchez walked to the middle of the stage and he looked at 3,000 parents doing this slow clap. Looked down at this little leather book, gave us a Miguel Sanchez smile, took that leather book, stuck it up in the air. 3,000 parents, including all of my friends, stood up for Miguel Sanchez. Miguel Sanchez walked to the end of that stage, and when he walked off that stage, not literally, but when he got to the bottom of that stage, the University of Redlands, private university, $56,000 a year, looked at Miguel and said, Miguel, we love you. We love you. You're exactly the type of kid that we are looking for. Your grades are amazing. You can play sports. Your essay questions were out of this world, and your personal interview is exactly what we're looking for. University of Redlands looked at Miguel and said, Miguel, you're the kid we want to come to our school. We would like to offer you, this was crazy, $200,000, almost a free ride scholarship to this university. Miguel Sanchez had to come up with $36,000 to go to a private university. He looked at that school and said, I'll take that deal. Shook their hand, and he took that deal. Between his senior year of high school, freshman year of college, according to his Instagram page, all Miguel did all summer long was smoke weed. Freshman year of college, he didn't do so good. But you know what, students? I'm not even going to blame the weed on that because my daughter did terrible. She only got $10,000. Didn't even cover her books barely for this semester at school. But she didn't do so well. But her sophomore year, end of her freshman year, beginning of her sophomore year, my daughter took off. And she had it all tuned in and she knew exactly what she was going to do. Miguel Sanchez ran into this little problem. Problem is, the track team he was on was all going to get drug tested. And so he had a choice. Do I stick with this school that gave me $200,000 to attend, or do I continue to smoke weed? No audience has ever gotten this wrong before. What do you think Miguel chose? Weed. Weed. Miguel looked at the school and said, thank you very much. Here's $150,000 back. I'm out and he dropped out his sophomore year. How do I know this story? This is a part of the story that kind of makes my stomach hurt. About six months after this happened, my daughter and I were having one of those great dad-daughter days, 
Every light was green. Every joke was funny. Her playlist was on point. Every song was right on. We had this great day. Then on the way home, my daughter says, hey, uh, do you want to stop and get some sandwiches? <laughs> you know I'm not going to pass that up, right? We pull into Subway. We're laughing, walking to the door. I push the door open for my daughter. We look up. Mm. Who's making sandwiches? Miguel. Miguel had his little paper hat on, and I am not making fun of people that work at Subway because that's not an easy job. I looked at him. He looked at me. He goes, hey, Mr. L. I'm like, hey, Miguel. I put my head down because I didn't want to embarrass this kid. He made our sandwiches, rolled them up, walked out the door and left. My daughter called him a couple days later and said, hey, Miguel, you want to get together for some coffee? And Miguel's like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Can you meet me at Starbucks? He's like, ah, I don't have a car. Can you pick me up? Okay. Where do you live? Still live at my house with my folks. My daughter had already gotten her life kind of going. They had a three-hour cup of coffee. And in the three hours, about halfway through, my daughter asked that question I had to know the answer to, the one that you're thinking about right now. What happened? Miguel looked at my daughter, and he goes, <laughs> he goes man, I chose weed over a scholarship. She goes, do you think about that? He goes, all the time. Every time I go into work, I think about that. And she could instantly tell this was not something he wanted to talk about. So they stopped talking about it. An hour and a half later, she drives him home. She said she gave him a good hug because it was like her brother, right? She gave him a good hug because she felt like this was the last time that she was going to see him, and it literally was. Pulled the car up to his house, hugged him. He got out, and he walked he stopped, and he turned around, and he came back to the car, and this is the part that breaks my heart. Miguel looked at my daughter, and he said, hey, will you tell your dad something? She goes, yeah, what do you want him to know? He says, remember when we were in high school, and your dad spoke to us, the seniors? He goes, yep. And your dad was talking about how drugs and alcohol take away, like, your ability or your skill? Oh, yeah. Miguel said, tell your dad he was right. Marijuana took away my ability to run. That doesn't make me feel good at all, man. It breaks my heart with this kid. My daughter said, all right, I'll tell him. Miguel said when I was speaking and he was sitting in the audience just like you are right now, he thought to himself, and he told my daughter this, he goes, I thought to myself, <laughs> look at this old man. What an idiot. He just doesn't want me to have fun. Drugs aren't dangerous. Drugs aren't bad. I'm Miguel Sanchez. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my ability to run, and I'm going to go all the way around the world. And you know what I'm going to do the whole time I do it? I'm going to smoke weed. He said, tell your dad he was right. And you know what I came to realize? You guys know I'm a gal Sanchez, more than likely. I hate doing this, but it makes such a strong point. Teachers, participate in this as well, please. How many students or teachers in this room know this kid? Really amazing at playing some kind of, uh, really amazing at school. Looks like they're going to be like this amazing student and stuff. And then they lose it because of drugs and alcohol and they dropped out or they quit. Who knows that kid? Raise your hand, right? Or that family member. Look how many parents or teachers. Teachers always raise their hand on this stuff. How about this kid? Has some kind of amazing talent, skill, or ability. Right? He can play the guitar, or he can run, or he can play sports, and like that. Starts doing drugs and alcohol, and then he loses that ability. Who knows that kid? Yeah, look at that. Right? How about this kid? Super close to mom and dad. They get along great. They start using some kind of electronic cigarette. All they do is fight now, and that's every conversation is about that. Who knows that kid? Right? Yeah. You know Miguel. You've seen it happen. I'm going to ask you a super easy question. You guys are going to be able to shout this answer right back at me. What is the main chemical they put inside e-cigarettes that cause the addiction? Nicotine. Nicotine. See? You guys knew that. And the reason why you knew that is because in the 90s, the tobacco industry got sued. So the electronic cigarette company said, we don't want to get sued. We're going to tell everybody nicotine's in it. Now let me ask you this. If I were to send all of you home, tell you to come back on Monday with something from your house that had nicotine in it. But here's the rules. It cannot be a cigarette, can't be an electronic cigarette, can't be a pipe, can't be a cigar, can't be any type of tobacco product like chewing tobacco, no tobacco products. Cannot be nicotine patch, cannot be nicotine gum, can't be your grandmother's little purse where she carries cigarettes, <laughs> or it can't be that one family member that smokes cigarettes all day. 
Somebody tell me, where could you find nicotine at your house, but not in a tobacco product? Anybody know? Somebody shout out an answer. In the fridge? Nope. Uh, nope, not in marijuana. Milk. No, that would be terrible. Where? Medicine. No. Check this out. If you were to uh, look on the, can, uh, the back of a can of Raid. Raid. Nicotine is one of the strongest poisons that a plant can produce. If you look on the back of a can of Raid, you'll find a product that begins with NIC or ends in T-I-N-E. This is terrible. The tobacco industry has figured out how to kick up that nicotine level so high that when bees land on tobacco plants to pollinate them, what happens is they absorb too much nicotine and it's killing our bee population. So the thing is, nicotine can be found in bug spray. It's a natural poison or pesticide. How many people have bug spray at their house? Everybody? Okay. How many of you have ever sprayed a bug with something other than bug spray like Windex? Who's done that one? Oh my gosh. Nice. How many of you have ever sprayed a bug with like Lysol or Febreze or something like that? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Funny. How many of you have ever sprayed a bug with like hairspray or Axe body spray? Who's done that? Really? Okay. Nothing? Body spray? No. Nope. I came home one time, I came home one time, our whole house smelled like hairspray. And I'm trying to figure out where it came from. I go in my daughter's room, there's this big mark up on the ceiling. I'm like, honey, what happened? She looks at me and goes, a spider. <laughs> I look on the ground, this spider's walking like Michael Jackson from Thriller, you know. But yeah, very old story. Back when I was seven years old, seven-year-old little Ray, uh, we had to entertain ourselves, okay? So we didn't have video games or anything like that. Seven-year-old Ray is out in the barn, and I'm playing with a can of Raid. That's what I'm doing that day. I'm out there spraying bugs like a seven-year-old little boy does, right? Now, in our barn, when the chickens were gone, cockroaches would take over. And so seven-year-old little Ray catches this big, huge cockroach in the corner of the garage. I'm a kid with a can of Raid. Little cockroach is looking at me. I'm looking at him. He's begging for his life. He's like, please, senor, do not kill me. I will grant you three wishes if you let me live, right? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm a seven-year-old little boy. You're going to die. Get ready. <laughs> seven-year-old little Ray sprayed the tiniest amount of Ray you could spray on a cockroach. I went like this. I went like that. Couple little drops landed on this cockroach. Cockroach panics, takes off running, right? Now, audience, I'm getting ready to spray a bug that's running, right, again. This time, do I spray him with a little bit or a lot? Do I spray him with a lot or a lot, a lot? A Picture seven-year-old Ray running through the barn spraying a cockroach. I was like, Pshh. I told you I don't know how to run, right? Pshh. I get to the other corner of the garage, and I'm spraying him in the face, you know. I'm like this. I'm like, Pshh. Right? Little cockroach is swimming through raid. He's doing tricks. He's sliding. Finally, the little cockroach flips over. His little legs shake, and he dies. Yes. What killed that little cockroach was a form of nicotine. Now, students, here's how nicotine kills cockroaches. When you spray a cockroach with nicotine or raid, it lands on the cockroach, very quickly goes into the cockroach, and it blocks all the signals. It becomes what's called the beta blocker. This is terrible, and the tobacco industry knows this. Students, if you took one pack of cigarettes, just one pack of cigarettes, and you removed all of the nicotine out of it, you'd have a little over a drop. If we put that drop on somebody your size, that would literally be enough to kill you. If I took one drop of nicotine from a pack of cigarettes, put it on my tongue or on my skin, my heart's gonna be out of rhythm, I'm going to have trouble breathing. I'm going to be vomiting a whole bunch. I'm not going to know where I'm at, and I'm going to have trouble breathing. It gets you to the point where it's going to kill you. It's a poison. If you took one jewel pod and you removed all of the nicotine out of that, again, that would be enough to kill you. 
here's what would happen. You'd put nicotine on my system. As I'm walking right now, my brain is talking to my feet, telling my feet what to do, telling my hands what to do, telling my mouth what to do, telling my heart what to do. But what happens is if you put enough nicotine on me, none of those body parts would be able to talk to each other. Now the question I always get is why don't people die when they smoke cigarettes? Because it's such a tiny amount that goes into the system. It's not enough to kill you unless somebody smoked a whole entire pack at one time, which would be literally impossible to do. But students, here's the big question. If nicotine is a poison, two things I want you to know when you walk out of this room. Number one, nicotine's a poison. Number two, it kills because it separates out body parts. Here's the question. If it's a poison, how does it cause the addiction? Everybody take your hand, hold your hand up like this. Hold your finger up like this, place it directly in the center of your forehead. If you were to go a knuckle deep back into your forehead, you're gonna hit a little button we're gonna call a go button. G-O, go button. Move your finger over to your left eye. Right over your left eye is a stop button. Go button, stop button, go button, stop button, put your hands down. How many, of, let me show you how that works. How many of you have ever had somebody ask you to do something and you're like, yeah! And then you think about it and like, I should have said no. Who's done that? Yeah. Okay? Every day. Every day. Now, when somebody asks you to do something, it immediately hits your go button first. Go button always gets hurt first. How many of you ever had somebody jump out and scare you super good? Like they got you. Nice. How many of you have ever jumped out and scared somebody super good? Nice. How many of you have ever scared your grandma really good? Like you got your grandma. All right, if you put your hand up, you're in trouble. Do not scare your grandma, okay, yeah. You don't know how much longer she has. Don't take her out that way. All right. I follow this guy on TikTok who scares his wife over and over again. He jumps out, scares his wife, and his wife goes like this all the time. She goes, oh, oh, you know. She's like, oh, she like shakes. So what happens, and I shh, when somebody jumps out and scares you and you have a crazy reaction, you jump, run, scream, do all these crazy things, that's because they hit the go button inside your head, okay? The reason why you're not screaming right now is because your go button pssst, sent the signal to your stop button. I brought my son to a training like this when he was a little boy. He's sitting in the front row looking up at dad. We're driving home. My little boy looks up at me and goes, Dad? I'm like, yep. Whenever you get really scared and you act funny, is that because it hits your go button? I'm like, yeah, that's why, son. And he says, and then you stop acting funny because your go button pssst, sends a signal to your stop button? I'm like, yeah. Students, I thought I was teaching my son something. I wasn't. He was just trying to figure out the best way to get Dad. A <laughs> Couple days later, like two days later, I'm getting ready to go to work. One hand, I have a cup of coffee. Other hand, I have my car keys. I walk through the living room. I say goodbye to my family. They say goodbye to me. I crank open the front door. I take one step out. My son comes flying out of the bushes, and he goes, hurrah, 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 hurrah. <laughs> right? <laughs> he got me. Students, I threw my keys down. I literally threw my cup of coffee in the front yard. I jumped back. I'm screaming. I'm saying words I didn't even know I knew. I'm like, yabba dabba do. I didn't say yabba dabba do. It was a lot worse than that. I'm like, yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do, yabba dabba. My wife comes running in the living room. She's like, yabba dabba do. And I'm like, yabba dabba do. You know. My son was laughing so hard, he's holding his stomach. I look at him like, what are you doing? He looks up at me all cool and he goes, got your go button. I'm like, yeah, go to your room because you're in trouble, right? <laughs> Two days later, a couple days later, I look at my family and I said, hey, who wants to go to the movies? They're like, yeah, let's go. I go, wash my hands, whatever, throw my shoes on, grab my keys. I walk out to the car. I'm sitting in the driver's seat of the car with the car running. 
I'm staring at the front door. I did not know my son was in the back seat of the car. As I'm staring at the front door, my son grabs my face, pulls my head back, and he hollers, I got you, right? <laughs> I'm like, ah, yabba dabba do, and I start honking the horn, right? He kept scaring me, kept scaring me, kept scaring me. Students, I had to have a talk with my son. I said, son, stop scaring dad. He looks at me and he goes, why? I said, son, let me tell you something. Dad's a puncher. Dad likes to punch whatever scared him. And I just Googled it. There's a law in the United States that says, do not punch your own kids, right? It is a very good law. I believe in that law. But whoever wrote this law didn't have a kid that was scaring him. Students. Do you think my son stopped scaring dad? No. no. Here's the last day my son scared me. Friday night. His bedtime's usually 8.30. I send him to bed at 9 o'clock. Extra half hour. 9.30, I'm ready to go to sleep. I am walking down the hallway, and I know the second I lay down, I'm going to be asleep. This is going to be a beautiful night's sleep. I'm walking down the hallway. Man, I am tired. For some reason, I stopped and I looked into his bedroom. When I looked into his bedroom, my son had been waiting a half an hour. He comes flying straight at me. But now he's wearing that Chewbacca mask. You know the one? And he's like, right? Students, he just hit my go button without thinking about it. I go like this. Next thing I know, I'm watching my fist go past my face like, no! <laughs> I can't punch little Chewbacca! Please hear this. This right here is why it's so easy to start smoking, so hard to stop smoking. When I was in school, three cigarettes. That's all it took was three cigarettes to cause an addiction. Nowadays, what they're saying with students your age, a student your age can develop an addiction within two days of using some type of puff bar. The tobacco industry just wants you to get, try it real quick. Let me show you the power of nicotine, how strong this drug is. How many people in this room know somebody who's tried to quit smoking cigarettes two or three times and they go right back to it? There it is. How many of you have ever talked to that adult and they're like, if I was a better person or stronger person, I'd be able to stop? Nope, not true. This drug is designed to cause an addiction. I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna go inside all of your heads and I'm gonna hit the go and the stop button at the same exact time. Some of you are gonna feel a little jolt run through you, okay? Now, let's try to do this in an orderly way because I want this to work, okay? So let me have everybody stand up real quick. Everybody stand up. Feels good to stand up, huh? Yeah. Stretch it out a little bit. Stretch it out. Shake your arms. Shake your legs. Shake your head. Shake your friend a little bit. Wake your friend up just a little bit. That's not too much. Not too much. All right. And a hush. Students. Here's where it's going to get complicated. All right. What I want you to do, listen up, is I want you to turn so you are facing somebody. You are looking at somebody in their face. It could be three of you, that's fine, or four. All right. And a hush. Standing completely still. Listen up. And a hush. I want you to take your right hand. Guys, listen up, please. Take your right hand, bend it at the elbow so it's pointed just like this. Nothing else. Just bend it at the elbow. Okay? Students, not like this, not like this, like this. All right. Just like this. Okay. Just like that. Okay. And I.
Next thing I want you to do, listen up. Take your left finger, point it in the air. Very gently, place it in their open palm. Not your open palm, their open palm. All right. Students. Students, listen up. And I sh the hand that is open, the hand that is open is connected to your go button inside your head. And I sh this finger that is in the palm of their hand, it's connected to your stop button. When you hear me, and I sh hey guys up at the bleachers, listen up. Listen up. When I say the word go, this hand that is open, you got to try to grab their finger. This finger that is in the palm of their hand, you have to try to get it out. All right? Get ready. And I shh. Get ready. And go. Nice. Let's try it again. Get on up there. Let's try it again. Get ready. And go. Nice. Last one. Last one. Get on up there. Get on up there. Here we go. Last one. Right hand out. Finger in the palm of their hand. Get ready. And go. Good job. Give yourself a round of applause. Go ahead and sit back down. Sit back down. Hey man, let me have, let me have you scoot over that way just a little bit. Thank you. All right. Last thing. And I. Sh All right, students. You have been the perfect audience. I love this group. Okay, you're welcome. All of you are going to get an A+. Plus. Here's what I need you to do. Listen up. I need you to do this. I'm going to ask you six questions. Just six questions. I need everybody, and teachers help me out with this please. I need everybody to sit completely still. Okay? Students, do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do that. These are all the things I've seen. And especially don't do that, okay? You know what, point at somebody real quick, just get it out of your system, point at somebody, point at somebody, okay. No, don't make noise, just point. Okay, here we go. And I, sh six questions. The reason why I want you to sit completely still is because we are not going to embarrass anybody, that is not part of what I do, okay? I had a kid at a high school, like last week, I'm watching him. He turned around and he pointed right at this young lady. I immediately shut that thing down and walked him out because nobody's going to be embarrassed by this. I just want you to know in your head where you stand when it comes to e-cigarettes and electronic cigarettes. Six questions. If you answer yes to one question, just one question, you're pointed in the right direction for an addiction. If you answer yes to two or all six of the questions, it's going to be hard for you to stop. But let me tell you what's going to happen at the end of these six questions. If you answer yes to all six of these questions, your brain is going to do this. Whoa! Because it's going to be like this brand new door open to you. And right there is where your brain is ready to make a stop. If you are still smoking two weeks from now, it's going to be extra hard to quit. Let me show you why. Tree. Drunk driver. Drunk driver's heading towards a tree. They slam into it. Airbag goes off. They break their arm, they roll out on the ground, and they're bleeding. I walk up to that drunk driver on the ground, I'm like, hey, 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 excuse me, sir, yeah, do you think you should stop drinking? That drunk driver will look up at me and go, yeah, yeah, man, this is the worst thing ever. I have to stop drinking. Students, if I wait two weeks and I ask them, sir, do you think you need to stop drinking? You know what they say? No. If that tree wasn't there, I wouldn't have hit it, right? So get ready. I don't expect 
anybody to say yes to all six, but please sit completely still, okay? Question number one, how do you know if you have an addiction? Question number one, if you know anybody that has ever smoked in class, teacher turns their back or they walk out, they use it real quick, they blow the smoke behind them or they blow it into their shirt and they giggle, that's a huge sign, not out loud, that's a huge sign of an addiction. Question number two, if you know anybody that goes in and out of the bathroom a whole bunch and uses their electronic cigarette when they go in there, or if they're like, uh, Mr. Johnson, can I use the restroom? But when they go in, sit still please, they go in, they know they're gonna use their electronic cigarette, that's a sign of a huge addiction. Question number three, if you know anybody that lied to purchase it or they got it illegally, so they had an older brother or sister buy it for them. They went onto a website, they clicked, yes, I'm over the age 18. They used a gift card, they had it sent to a friend's house and then they picked it up. If you know anybody that lied or got it illegally, that's a sign of a huge addiction. This next one will say how strong the addiction is. If you know anybody that wakes up in the morning and they use it right away. There was a study that just came out two weeks ago that said students that use an electronic cigarette use it within seven minutes of waking up. If you know anybody that wakes up, looks at a couple TikTok videos, and then they use it, that's a sign of a huge addiction. This next one will determine what your brain is doing. When I was asking you these questions right now, if you felt scared, nervous, or if you felt defensive, if you said anything like this inside your head, Nah, this guy doesn't know what I'm talking about. He's an old man. He's just trying to scare me. I could quit whenever I want. I'm just goofing around with it right now, man. I'm going to stop in like a week or so. I'm getting tired of it. If you said anything like that or you tried to dehumanize me, nah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an idiot. Anything like that. What your brain is doing is it's trying to protect the addiction. Last one. This is a big one. If you know anybody that has a hiding spot in their bedroom, in their backpack, or if they have an electronic cigarette on them right now. That's a huge sign of an addiction. Students, you have been sitting in this room for one hour. While you've been sitting in here, 54 people have died. Literally this whole side right here have died because of something that is tobacco related. They need new customers. They're not looking at an old man like me because an old man like me isn't gonna start smoking. They're looking at young people like you to start smoking. Please do not become a dollar sign to the tobacco industry. You guys, my name is Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintano Sano. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to you guys today. Thank you. Hold on. I didn't have time to take questions, but if you want to contact me, this is how you can get a hold of me. Your kids did great. Be proud of them. They did.